right guys here she is she doesn't have a name yet but this is a 1971 duracraft 1436 john boat the model that i found on the duracraft website for this boat is called a fisherman now i picked this boat up several months ago for 400 dollars it came with a 18 horsepower Johnson and that motor did not run. The boat and the motor had been stored in a boathouse unused for around six years. It did not come with a trailer. So in this video, I'm just gonna kind of do an overview of how I've got this thing set up. And then hopefully the next video will be out on the water in this thing. Now it's been sprinkling for a while today, so it's a little wet, um, but I think the paint here is gonna show up pretty nice in the video. I actually painted this myself. As you can see, I didn't paint the floors, but I painted the front deck, the seats, the live well center seat, and I didn't paint the back seat, and also did not paint the transom area. And uh, my main reason for not painting those particular spots is I just only had a couple cans of spray paint. I really didn't want to mess with buying more spray paint. And I figured that eventually I'm going to be putting a, a little bit of foam and rubber mat in the floors just so that it's a little more comfortable to stand on if you don't have your shoes on in the summer. Uh, so, I, you know, wasn't a, a big deal to not paint the floors. And then as far as the transom area is concerned, as far as I know, the wood in this transom of this thing is as old as the boat is. So I just figured I might have to work on that transom area one day. And it doesn't bother me at all that it's still the original paint. If anything, it just kind of is a reminder to me of how far this boat has come. Uh, the outside of the boat and of course the inside that I painted looked like the floors do. Uh, was all this kind of a faded light green color and it was all scratched up and everything. Uh, all I did was just took some Rust-Oleum camo colored paint from Walmart and I did a base coat and then I took some uh, leaves out of the beautiful woods that we live in here and did some, you know, backwoods style camo. Not really any particular design or pattern in mind when I did it. I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of the breakup of the color and then as far as the outside goes, I was going to do the same thing on the outside, but my wife said she really likes it solid green color, so I left it as it is. Now, this boat is a little taller than your average John boat, like an Alumacraft or a low boat that you'd pick up from Academy or from Bass Pro. Uh, I believe the uh, sides of the boat are like an inch or two taller than those. The aluminum on this boat is a tad bit heavier. And then as you can see with the front, it's actually got a V front on it, which you don't normally see in the uh, cheaper boats. And I didn't know anything about any of that when I bought this. And someone uh, told me about that and said, man, this is a really good river boat because of that. It should be, you know, extra heavy duty, which these Duracraft boats are supposed to be known for their heavy dutiness. Uh, the other thing that it has is these rails all along the side of the boat. And then it's also got rails for seats on this front and on the back uh, bench seat there. But so when I bought it, it came with a Johnson 18 horsepower motor that had been sitting for six years. I had to do the points and condenser. I had to do uh, the impeller. I replaced the spark plug. I replaced the gear oil. Uh, really went through the whole thing top top to bottom got it running really really good and then I sold it I sold it for four hundred dollars So I basically made my money back that I spent on buying the boat Now you might be wondering why would you sell a perfectly good running? Uh, 18 horsepower Johnson because you may or may not know those are known as being bulletproof motors and everything uh, one of the main reasons that I did is because it was a long shaft motor which means that the uh, lower unit of the motor sat down several inches more than this below the bottom of the boat and that's not supposed to be uh, the best as far as how the propeller and everything lines up with the boat when you're riding and then of course the uh, obvious difference that would make is that it was dragging on stuff uh, i fish mainly creek areas and stuff like that and i'm generally in you know at the most six feet of water 
Uh, but a lot of times I find myself in two or three feet of water uh, tops in some areas. And so there was a couple times where I dragged the motor on the bottom and it just made me kind of nervous. And I want to be able to go out on a boat and enjoy fishing and not have to worry about stuff like that. So for me, uh, being that I wasn't going to need to use all 18 horsepower anyways, I just felt like it was a smart move to recuperate my money that I had gotten on the boat so that I could spend it on some other stuff. And what I did with that money is I got this nice Bimini top here. It's in the stowed position as you can see. But this is kind of a game changer here in East Texas. The summers here are pretty brutal. And so that's going to be really helpful to keep me from getting delirious and sunburned when I'm out on the lake in the summer. Another thing that I did is I bought some seats. It didn't come with any seats. So I picked up these seats at Walmart and then I had to buy some brackets so that they would mount to the rails on these seats. I mean, I guess technically I didn't have to do that, but the other option was to drill holes in the seats. So I ordered the brackets. I think they're Easy Mount brand. I can't remember the name uh, for sure, but installation was really easy, just like it, the name sounds. And other than that, I, I got a new drain plug for it here. All right, I just got a phone call. I completely forgot where I was in this video. I know I was talking about the seats, yeah. So I got some seats put in it. I also invested in a new drain plug. The drain plug that uh, was being used for this boat was really old and I was getting a little bit of water leaking in, which is never a good thing. So I picked up a new drain plug. It came with a fish finder depth finder, but it was the 1990-ish base model version that you would pick up at Walmart. I upgraded to the 2020 base model Walmart uh, Hummingbird Piranha Max 4. This is not the side or down imaging or whatever. It's just a basic, I believe they're $99 or $89. So I replaced that out. The one that was in here, the problem I was having with it was with the transducer. So I'll show you that here. Uh, the problem that I was having with it is the transducer mount that was on here, the guy had gotten the, the uh, transducer caught on one of his deals for his boat lift, the straps or whatever. And so it had cracked the transducer. He also at that point had pulled this wire out of the transducer and then tried to fix it with a, a bunch of silicone. And so it would turn on and off or it would give these crazy readings. It kept telling me that the water temperature was either 10 degrees or 100 degrees. It was really weird. So I just went ahead and replaced it. And when I did, I bought this uh, breakaway mount here just so that if I ever do hit anything or it gets caught on something, uh, hopefully it won't break the transducer mount. So I picked that up, uh, I think on Amazon. I just had a trolling motor, which I'll show you that here in a second. It's up in the front. And with the trolling motor, obviously I was able to do two or three miles an hour tops. And uh, that was enough to get me around the areas that I normally fish because they generally aren't too far away from the three different boat ramps that I normally go to. But you know, as you can imagine, it's real slow going. It would take me a long time to get to or from my little spots and uh, just got kind of annoying. I knew I was going to get a new outboard motor, but I just wanted to make sure that I got something in a short shaft and I knew that the, the uh, horsepower rating, the max rating for this boat, I believe is 20 horsepower, but don't quote me on that. This being a 1971, it's, there's no Coast Guard capacity plate on it. I believe 71 might have even been the first year that they were required to put serial number tags on boats because prior to that, I don't believe you were even required to register boats in any state. But so anyways, I uh, found this Suzuki four horsepower motor. I've got a video on it if you check through my channel. When I bought it, the guy said that it just needed the carburetor cleaned. It had been stored with ethanol fuel in it, which he was correct. It took me, you know, maybe 30 minutes or so to clean the carburetor and put it back on. But I found quickly that it had another problem, which was that it was not pumping water. So I ended up having to replace the impeller and uh, do some work underneath the power head to dislodge some gravel and stuff that was in there. And now it seems like it runs fine, at least in the test barrel. Uh, like I said, I haven't tested it yet. I expect this boat to do around 10 or 12 miles an hour tops with me in it alone 
Uh, hopefully it goes that fast anyways. It may only go six or eight miles an hour. I have no idea what it's gonna do, but like I said, I'll be doing a video with a speed test on this thing soon, so look forward to that in the future. So the last upgrade that I did was buying this trailer. Now when I picked this John boat up, my original intent was to find a boat that I could get in and out of my truck easily and just load in the bed of my truck. The nearest boat ramp to me is actually at the end of this road, you turn right and it's right up there. It's maybe, I don't know, a five minute drive, believe it or not. Uh, the lake is actually only about a mile and a half that way. So my idea was that I would be putting this thing in and out of my truck bed. And I wasn't necessarily even looking for a 14 foot boat when I happened upon this deal. I was actually looking for a 12 or a 10 foot boat. And what I learned very, very quickly is that it's a real pain in the butt to get a boat this long and heavy. That's one thing that the slightly thicker aluminum does in a boat like this. It also makes it a little bit heavier than your standard John boat, but it was just a real pain in the butt to get this in and out of my truck. Uh, I did that maybe four or five times before I said, you know what, I'm not gonna do this anymore. At that point, I didn't have this outboard yet and uh, was kind of watching and looking on Facebook and Craigslist for something to pop up for sale. And I ended up coming across my Sun Dolphin eight foot sportsman mini pontoon boat. It's over there in the barn now. Uh, but I've got several videos on my channel fishing from that. And it actually fulfilled my desire to have something to get in out of my truck easily. And uh, that kind of slowed me down on the progress with this thing because now I had something that I could just throw up in my truck, head down to the boat ramp and be in the water. I ended up coming across this motor uh, for $200 on Facebook. It came with a uh, uh, iBobber, which I still haven't really used yet. And a Shakespeare Tiger spinning rod, which is the catfish looking rod they sell at Walmart for 20 bucks. So that's how I got this motor and that kind of got me back in the groove of wanting to get this thing on the water. Uh, but the only thing stopping me was like I said, it's a real pain in the butt to get this in and out of my truck. So then I started looking for a trailer and I came across this uh, galvanized Skipper B John boat trailer for sale on Facebook for only a hundred dollars and it was it was like fate I opened my phone up to just check to see if any new boat trailers had been listed and this boat trailer had literally it didn't even give a time of how long ago it was listed it just said you know listed just now and it said aluminum John boat trailer we had a 14 foot boat on it we sold the boat a hundred bucks come get it and what do you know, I was the first person to contact them. I warmed the diesel up and I headed out. I picked this trailer up and drove it home. As you can see, uh, it's in pretty good shape. It's got a square tube axle. I think it's two inch and it's a 3,500 pound axle and uh, came with these wheels and tires over here, which I spray painted them white. They looked like this that's the inside and it's a mixture of rust and bearing grease all over this wheel it's pretty gross but this is a 15 inch wheel and it's actually got car tires on it these might be light truck tires I have no idea but the size of them is 205 60 R 15 so these are actually car tires and the problem that I had with them which it's a little harder to tell while they're wet but I think you can still see it is they're dry rotted real real bad and uh, just made me nervous that I would have a blowout going down the road and uh, the last thing I want to do is you know have any kind of damage to my truck my boat or God forbid have an accident or have someone around me get into an accident because I have a blowout uh, because I simply didn't replace weather check tires so uh, one thing on my radar was to get new wheels and tires and then the other thing was the guy had mentioned to me when I picked this trailer up that the bearings had literally never been done I'm not real sure what year this trailer is but I believe it's about 10 years old and again he said they had never been done he said there wasn't really a lot of play ever so he didn't really feel like he never needed to do them and he always kept them greased uh, so one thing I did before I trailered this boat home is I did 
grease the bearings he told me that he had just done it but I went ahead and said well look if you've got your grease gun can I just check them to make sure and see if they'll take any more grease before I get on it was like a 45 minute drive uh, so I greased them up and I drove home now here's what those old hubs look like as you can see there's a lot of rust and uh, bearing grease built up on them but the bearing grease that was in there I don't know if you can tell but it was real gray and kind of a milky color and that's just from water getting in through the bearing seals over time although there wasn't any play in the bearings one side was a little tighter than the other side and both of them made a small amount of a grinding noise and so just like those dry rotted tires the bearings in this thing made me really nervous and uh, like I said about this boat you know I don't want to spend my time in the water worrying about whether my long shaft motor is too long I want to spend my time in the water worrying about catching fish I don't want to spend my time trailering my boat to the spot worrying about if my bearings or wheels are gonna fall apart and I definitely don't want to spend my fishing time worrying about trailer and my boat home so I went ahead and got brand new wheels and tires these are actually 14 inch rims what my thoughts were here were that these car tires were actually pretty thin so even though those are 15 inch rims they only came up to about right here so if I was to have just kind of sanded those rims down cleaned them up and got some 15 inch trailer tires 15 inch trailer tires are actually an inch taller than this now with 3500 pound axles this trailer is able to run 15s with no problem but I don't want to make this trailer any higher when I'm at the boat ramp so I would have had to back into the water farther so my idea was that by going with 14s I would be around the same height as these tires there which like I said these are just a little bit taller than those car tires were on those 15s so I got some brand spanking new 15 inch wheel and tire combos from Trailer Parts Unlimited. They are in Huntsville, Texas, north of Houston. It was about 45, everything's a 45 minute drive, but it was about a 45 minute drive. And uh, if you ever find yourself in Huntsville, the Texas Prison Museum's there and they've actually got old Sparky, the electric chair down there that you can check out. It's pretty cool. So I picked up these brand new wheels and tires and I also got brand new hubs rather than take those old wheel bearings out and try to clean them up and reuse some parts i think i figured it was a better and easier idea just to replace the whole hubs i'd never done that before on a trailer but it was actually really easy and i learned a lot during the process of taking everything off taking the old hubs apart and looking at everything and i have a way better understanding now for how the trailer hub systems work i really had no idea before so other than that the only other thing i had to do to this trailer was it had a uh, flat piece up here this is your stop block i replaced it with this v-shaped piece because of course we've got our v-front although this winch works perfectly fine it makes me a little nervous that it's as rusty as it is uh, it's not loose or anything but uh, i do plan to replace this winch sooner than later and then i forgot lastly the wiring on this thing was horrendous uh, none of the lights worked so i bought a trailer wiring kit at walmart and ran brand new wires to these i believe they're submergible um, brake lights but i mean if i'm in this much water i'm in trouble at that point the trailer's probably completely underwater i uh replaced the wiring got new brake lights for the trailer and now it's pretty much got everything it needs came with a trolling motor and a battery so we've got our trolling motor here just a Minn Kota 30 pound Endura nothing fancy about it I actually mount that up here on the side I put that block of wood up there and then clamped the trolling motor there I tried clamping it in the front as you can see there and I just didn't didn't really like it but as for now i'm not planning to deck this boat out or anything that may change over time once i get more experienced with it but for me going from an eight foot sun dolphin as my primary boat to this thing i just feel like uh, i want to use it like this for a while first to figure out what i like and don't like about the way that it's set up and the end game is to one day 
sell this and move to a 1448. Uh, that way my wife and my two kids can come with me and we don't have to worry as much about this thing being shaky in the water. Uh, I think the Coast Guard capacity is probably three people, but uh, my youngest son's only three years old, so he's not really a lot of extra weight. But so the uh, marina, one of the marinas I go to actually rents out John Boats and we rented a 1442, which is only a little bit wider than this and was actually pretty comfortable for all four of us to be in. So we've only taken this thing out all together once and I've only taken it out a handful of times and it was before I started my YouTube channel. So I don't have any video of that, but stay tuned because I do plan on having a lot more footage of this thing in the future. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys the setup here and give you an idea of what all we've got going. Stay tuned for more videos in the future featuring our 14 and a half foot John boat. As always, thanks for watching my videos. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. And we will see you next time. We're gonna go fishing.